Fitzalan High School is a large multicultural school serving the south side of, of Cardiff. Um, we have approximately 1,750 children on roll, uh, including a large sixth form. And the community that we serve is a very diverse community, which makes our school a very rich place to be. And around 85% of our children come from a minority ethnic background. And from that, we have over 50 languages that are spoken in the school by our pupils and our staff. We have been an innovation school since April 2019 and prior to that we're a pioneer school for languages, literacy and communication. As an innovation school, what we've made sure we do is look at high level curriculum design. So what we've been mindful to do at this point of the curriculum still being in draft form is not to jump too much into the detail of the areas of learning now. So what we've ensured that we've done over the last few years is prepare our staff ensure that the pedagogical principles are embedded in everything that we do so that you have a firm footing of um, really high quality teaching and learning um, because if you are able to do that in your classrooms then it doesn't matter what changes will come along you know those children are actually getting the best possible uh, curriculum that, that they are going to benefit from. We have a situation whereby many of our children actually live in some of the, um, the most deprived areas of Wales so we're talking about lives here it's really important that we're careful with the changes that we make from one end of the school catchment area to the, to the complete opposite end might be a difference in 20 years lifespan for our children. So it's really important that, that we get this right and all of our children are enabled to meet the four purposes. We're very much taking our time to think about what our children need and, and to ensure that we, we don't make any rash decisions, um, that we don't make any changes that you know, are substantial structural changes. So we've decided at the moment that we're working on an inquiry-based learning model. Um, and with that, we'll again really firmly um, embedded pedagogy and research into that. So we've taken um, a look at what a high quality inquiry looks like, what really good quality questions look like that give depth to the pupils' learning. And with that, we've got groups of teachers that are working together in areas of learning and across areas of learning so that we can really make the links to those subjects. But for us, the priority is to ensure that those subject specialisms remain strong, that the knowledge, the skills, the experiences that the pupils have in all areas of learning are really rich, really, rich, really meaningful and that enable the four purposes. Underpinning all of the changes that we have made is a very careful process of change management. I think one of the things that is quite easy to do because this is such an open-ended curriculum in comparison with the national curriculum we've had for the last 30 years is for schools to be able to look at them and think, oh, well, we do that and therefore we don't need to make any changes. And really what I think is important about this new curriculum is the principles that are underpinning it and what it is that you're trying to achieve from a purpose-driven curriculum. And this is very new. 30 years, teachers have been told what to teach and, and largely complained about it. And now we've got a position where we've been given um, real freedom to meet the needs of our pupils in our context without that. And yet equally now people are a little bit worried about what am I going to teach? So that needs careful change management too. One of the things that influenced us in terms of the, the Institute of Change Management research that we've done is assessing the gap. So for staff to feel comfortable with any number of change, they need to have a clear understanding about where they currently are, what their current process is. So that reflection and evaluation of current process is really important. What that doesn't mean, however, is that you audit your provision, produce a massive spreadsheet and tick box, and don't really think about the principles that's actually sitting behind successful futures as well. If staff are confident with what it is that they're delivering and their, their pedagogy, their methods of delivery, then really the change comes then with thinking about the choices that you make that best fits the needs of those pupils and deciding on the content of your curriculum to best meet the needs of those pupils. And for us, we've taken the decision that in some senses, those bits might come later, because if you don't have that firm footing in professional dialogue, in professional learning and in teaching and learning, the danger is you end up with a range of lovely activities and lovely things but what are the children actually learning and how is that going to meet their needs in ensuring the four purposes? What's special about this and what's different from this is that you are really asked to think about why you originally went into the profession and what you really want from, from teaching. We now need to be brave. We need to trust the profession. We need to trust ourselves as a profession that we are absolutely capable of doing this. And now we just need to go for it and enjoy it because it's going to be a, a really good few years.